Today in the news, we got some more info on the RTX 4000 series. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Okay, so first of all, yes, I wanna acknowledge that this is my second video in the last 24 hours, so you can go check the other one right here. I'm sorry, but I saw this info at 2 a.m. and I had to make a video about it. So let's get started with NVIDIA. With the release of the RTX 3050 back at CES, it looks like NVIDIA has completed their GPU lineup for the RTX 3000 series. And with that, it's time to turn our attention to the RTX 4000 series. So let's recap what we have real quick. This week, we learned that Ada Lovelace, that's the architecture for the next-gen graphics, well, it would be based on TSMC's 4 nanometer process, a process more advanced than what AMD will use for their RDNA 3 graphics. RDNA 3 will be based on TSMC's 5 and 6 nanometer process nodes. Something else that has been floating around are the specs of RTX 4000, specifically the specs for the highest end RTX 4090. It would support the AD102 chip with up to 18,432 CUDA cores. Also, since its board design is compatible with the 3090 Ti, the RTX 4090 could sport up to 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. The speed of the memory is faster, but we'll get back to that in a moment. And with all of these specs comes a huge total graphics power draw, or TGP, of 600 watts. Oh, and the card would apparently still use the PCIe Gen 4 interface instead of the newer PCIe Gen 5, but that's not an issue. Gen 4 has enough bandwidth as it is. So what's new? Well, legendary leaker Copite 7 Kimi got us some of the specs for the more reasonable RTX 4080 and 4070, as well as a monster that is apparently roaming Nvidia's test chambers but we'll get to that in a moment. So the RTX 4080, what are we looking at here? Well, it would use the AD103 chip. We don't know the CUDA core count just yet, but given the 18,000 plus of AD102, it's safe to say that it's probably between 13 and 16,000 CUDA cores. We're also looking at 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X, which is a stark increase considering the RTX 3080 only had 10 gigabytes of memory at launch. According to Copite, the total graphics power of the 4080 would be similar to GA102, which consists of the 3080 all the way up to the 3090 Ti. This gives us a range starting at 320 watts all the way up to 450. Considering it has more memory and that Nvidia is probably going to tune it for performance, I'd say 400 watts wouldn't be surprising. And then we have the RTX 4070. This one would use the AD104 chip. Core count would be really hard to estimate right now, so let's talk about memory instead. This one gets 12 gigabytes of memory, but once again, the 70 series of GPUs gets stuck with the regular GDDR6 non-X flavor. With this model, we also also get a pretty big jump in TGP, going from 220 watts for their previous 3070 up to 300 watts for the 4070. Damn, 1000 watt power supplies, here I come. And lastly, Copite spoke about a monster that's been in testing. Now, like many GPUs before, for example, the RTX 3080 20 gigabytes, the uh, RTX 3070 16 gigabytes, and the 3070 Ti 16 gigabytes, this model might not see the light of day, and it's pretty clear why. So this model would use the full AD102 chip. That means the full fat 18,432 CUDA cores. It would support twice the memory at 48 gigabytes of GDDR6X, and the memory would be fast like blazing fast, 24 gigabits per second. It also would use two of the 16-pin you know, PCIe was Gen 5 power standard connectors. standard 10-amp. Yeah, two. That's because in its current testing phase, you know, the total in previous videos, I was making is a jokes. whopping 900 watts. You, you know, know, we know that the current 3090 Ti boards are designed to be compatible with next-gen AD102 chip, and that the current 3090 Ti's use the 600-watt 16-pin power connector for power delivery. Well, a lot of 3090 Ti's look like this. Two 16-pin power connectors, 
could easily deliver 900 watts here. Yikes. So what do you guys think about all this? I mean, it's kind of insane to go that far up in power delivery, but clearly the PCIe Gen 5 power connector is here for a reason. I wouldn't be surprised if RTX 5000 had three of those on a card. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.